Welcome back to the Millionaire in the Making podcast. My name is Gage. Justin. And today we're going to be reviewing, watching, reacting to Andrew Tate, Piers Morgan. Episode, was it like time, Uncensored number two? Two, yeah, part two. So yeah, without any further ado, we're going to jump right into it. Genghis Khan had endless women and 200 children as a reward for conquest. He tweeted, I'm the most searched man on the planet. I've conquered Earth. I'm the highest status male on the planet. Females do not expect loyalty from me. They only expect that of lesser men. Then there was this, imagine having less than 10 children because you're a, who doesn't have four wives, genetic failures. <laughs> Finally, if a girl follows me and she's hot and I see a single picture of her in a private jet, it's block. Women can't afford jets. Women are all brokies. Why are you flying around on some? All right, before we get any farther than this, he's a genius. He is getting exactly what he wants. He's getting viral tweets. All of that will be talked about. All of that will be shared. All of that will be commented on because people are going to hate it or love it. He's just a genius. I mean, I that's mean, only just genius antics on social media. So... Whether you agree or you don't agree, most people are just mad at the way he's saying it. You could reword this in such a nicer way. And he's logically he's out. logically rewarding it in that way to get yeah. comments, likes, shares. He's just doing it on purpose. So if he blows you're getting up. offended by this type of stuff, you are his target audience to share his stuff. Yeah, and you need to really when something offends me, which is kind of rare nowadays. I'm just like, if something really offends me, I take a moment. I'm like, why did that just offend me, and how did it trigger me? Like, really, why? Why 100%. am I getting offended? Yep. I That's just, I wanted to bring that up to say the stuff that you're seeing on this right now is made to offend you. It is made to offend people. And, you know, a little cheat code from behind the scenes, he's doing that to go viral. It's just a viral cheat code. What do you, what's the best way to become viral? Controversy. You, if you get offended, you are feeding right into his plan. As Jet, you should have been a virgin when I met you. I ran. All right, Andrew Tate. Now you're, you're getting very near the knuckle with some of those tweets. Am I? You tell me. I don't think so. I think people can understand they're semi-satirical. I think people can understand. Do you mean them as jokes or do you mean them? No, I don't mean them as jokes. I mean, they're a overall public commentary and observation. I do mean what I say. If I were to see a girl on a private plane on Instagram, for example, I would assume that a man put her on that private plane. I would not assume she bought it herself. What if it was Perhaps Ari that makes me misogynistic. What if it was Ariana Grande or Beyonce? Well, that's slightly different. Isn't it? Why? Because they're famous and very they're rich. Women? Yeah, of course, and they're famous and very rich. But so if I, also women, if I you saw, wouldn't think that if you well, actually saw them on If I saw, well, if I saw a 19-year-old girl from process, Moldova where the... First off, if I see, regardless of age, any 19, 20 to 27 to, honestly, anybody below the age of 40, if they got a private jet and they're on a private jet and they're under the age of 40, I don't think it's theirs. Fair enough. I mean... Fair observation. Girl I mean, you or know how, guy. Yeah. Or they're, I mean, or they're renting it. I mean, a group of chicks get together and put together some money and rent it. Especially with, with OnlyFans these days, you can rent some fucking private jets with the okay, but they're dough these like, chicks They're are dropping making. six grand to fly like two hours, three hours. Mi minimum. Minimum. It's, it's content, man. It's content. 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 But yeah, I do agree with what you're saying. I, I would more than likely put them in the bucket of older people. I mean, if you're over 40 kids. and you're on a jet, I'm, I might consider it. If you're 60 plus, I will definitely consider it. If you're under the age of 30, I'm just assuming you're, you're a passenger. Yeah, but I mean, let's be realistic. We said this in the last video. If you're on a private jet and you're a girl, and that means you're probably damn near a billionaire. You're not Kylie Jenner. You're not Beyonce Ariana, Ariana Grande, like they said. If we don't know you, if I don't know you personally online, I'm going to assume you, you know. And you're if you're, even if you're a dude, unless we really know who you are, we're still going to assume you just rented the jet. That's just the truth. I mean, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you know how much a jet is? It's like $10 million. And that's not even to fuel jet, it, yeah. maintain it. Um, just putting internet on a plane, it's like a hundred thousand dollar piece. Yeah, well, let's. I mean, let's ridiculous. say Mr. Richie Rich himself, or Mr. Tate, he doesn't even own a jet. He, he sold his jet. He no, doesn't even sold, own it. Yeah, he, he, no, just, he owned one at one point, and he sold it because it was just a horrible like investment. Like you can rent them for so much cheaper than owning it. Yeah, unless you're just sweating out money. It's not. And I might be wrong on this, but I saw a Grant Cardone clip, and he was like, the internet bill alone, the piece is like a hundred thousand dollars just to get internet on your on your plane. Jeez. But to actually get internet on your plane. It was either ten thousand or a hundred thousand dollars, and I think it was like a hundred thousand dollars a month is what it costs to get internet on your plane. That's wild. I might be wrong on that one, but it's just to have internet. Whenever he said a plane is a horrible investment, just because it's so expensive just to own the plane. You think owning a boat's expensive? I can't even imagine a plane. The maintenance on a plane. Yeah, yeah. that's wild. So to go back to where we all started, if you're female, I'm gonna assume you're on there with a man. I just like Tate. I stand by Tate on that one. Let's, let's replace plane with boat. 
average wage is $200 a month and she was on a private jet, I would assume that with the balance of probabilities, considering I'm an adult, it's very likely because of her beauty, a man has put her on that private plane. Yes, if that makes me misogynistic instead of just perspicacious enough to understand how the world works, so be it. I'm a realist. Should you be such a generalist about these things? Well, you have to be a generalist when you're looking for in the balance of probabilities and trying to find balance in the world. You have to be a generalist. In general, if I stroke a lion, it's going to bite my hand. In general, there might be a nice one, but I don't want to find out. So that's how the world works. You've praised the Taliban in the past. Would you do so again tonight? The world is not black and white. The world is gray. It's very difficult to sit and make black and white assumptions about anything, to sit and say that the Taliban are completely and utterly evil and we're completely and utterly good, as you just discussed with the moral high ground. I believe that the Taliban bring law and order. It may not be the law and order we like, but it's a form of law and order, and humans tra usually gravitate towards... What about towards their treatment of women? I mean, only tonight... Well, is, only tonight they have banned any women from going to university. Fantastic. Let's get the feminists to go and teach them a lesson. The feminists are so tough. And they stand up and say they can do anything a man can do. Let's arm him up and send him to Afghanistan. I'm sure they'll fix it. It just literally... They're going to take that so out of context and rip him for that. They're going to say, oh, it, it, you know how perfect that is. They're going to say, oh, Andrew Tate wants women to join the army and go fight and shoot people, which is what they've been marching for, raising <sighs> hell for, for years. And they're going to flip the narrative and say oh, he supports this or he wants this, and then they're going to completely make themselves look stupid. So I, I, He's I'm a not, genius. He's I'm, a genius. He is. I'm not well-versed on... what did, did he condemn the Taliban or say something about the Taliban in the past? No, he. I mean, he just didn't speak negatively about them. He just said, okay, um, from what Taliban. I remember the clip was, he was like, they bring law and order. I mean, when you hear that, it sounds negative. It probably is pretty negative, but in reality, they do bring law and order, just not good law and not good order. Fair so enough. he Let's... basically just said that and it's uh people took it out of you know they took it in the wrong context which i i would take that in the wrong context me personally yeah you want to you want to go ahead and put a, a bet down i bet piers is about to rip into him for saying that i would imagine the next 10 minutes of the clip is going to be about him and the taliban yeah piers is gonna piers is gonna rip rip right into him kid in a candy shop right here boom an impassioned first segment comparing the way for example dubai handles law and order correct to this country correct so you do express views about different laws absolutely both places so when i put to you a law that basically bans women from being educated it's not why is it a problem for you to say you know what it's wrong there are both places i've resided in dubai and london so i have personal experience i can give my personal opinion but like i said it has absolutely nothing to do with me with what the taliban decide to do inside of afghanistan and if they decide that's the most prudent way to run their society then we have two choices we can either go over there and start another war that we shouldn't be involved in and waste a bunch of life or we can sit and say it's up to them they should govern themselves their people we're no better than them and they've decided to live their lives a particular way and that's how they're going to live it like i said if feminists are very upset and they're very disgusted by the fact that in afghanistan women cannot go to school i've been told repeatedly by feminists that they're just as capable as men in all realms and I expect them to arm themselves and fly over to Afghanistan and fix it. Feminism is defended by men. Men stand up and defend feminism, not feminists themselves because they're incapable of violence. And we're in a situation now where you're saying that we should send men to go and fight for feminism. Why? It's not a man's problem. No, I think I'm saying feminists that, believe. Well, I, think, I think well, hey, I think men can be feminists too because if feminism believes in equality for women, it's not about equality. To it. anymore. I don't agree with radical feminists who hate men, but they're, they're do, to me, the radical anything to me is a bad thing. Yeah, and I think most feminism in the West currently is radical. Man, what changed? Piers is literally agreeing with everything he says. And have you noticed he's not cutting him off? Did you watch the last one where like Tate couldn't yeah. get two consecutive words out? That is because the comments. And the community wrecked him because when everybody was like, I mean, if you looked at the original uh, interview, it's literally just massive Pierce Morgan, like L, yeah, yeah, Pierce L, 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 Pierce L, 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 L. All he did was interrupt the rude, 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 unprofessional. And then it was just like they were blaming Tate for things that had no realm of what he does it's almost like it's almost like he was pressured like in this it seems like he's like genuinely stating his own opinions and thoughts but like the other one some seems off this well, does not seem the, remotely close to the last I, one. I know what they were doing the first one they were trying to just get clips they're trying to get clips of pierce would like just shoot five or six different questions he wouldn't let andrew like really marinate and like think on what to say but tate thinks really fast so it's just like he was trying to just bombard him with questions and he would say one thing that was like bad out of like four. Just hoping questions. for a slip up. And then and Tate might it. answer one of the other four questions and make that one clip look bad. 
Like if he says four things and one of them's like, you know, how do you think Islam's treating women? The next one's like, oh, you hate women. And then the next one is just like, well, what do you feel about the, the 2022 World Cup? And then it's like, he'd be like, well, I don't agree with that. And it's like, oh, you don't agree with them treating women, right? And He's then like, they just flip it. And then he just moves to the next conversation to where it's like, he doesn't give him time to justify. I'm like, he's really smart for what he's doing. And Tate called him out on it. Like, he's like, I know what you're doing. It's not hard to see. And it works for most people. It's just not going to work on me. Yeah. Well, smart move by Pierce to, you know. <laughs> Dude, people think he's dumb. Pierce Morgan is a very no, smart he's a, man. He's, he's, a he's, a genius. he's probably a genius. No, yeah. there's a reason why he's got one of the biggest platforms. Yeah, but shout out Pierce because, I mean, I think that's a big move on him to kind of almost agree with Tate on a lot of stuff because his audience is only going to grow from that. I think he even admitted that in his first podcast. He was like, I agree with most of the things that you're saying. It's just how you're saying it. And now he's just like, now that he knows him, he's just like, I agree pretty much with almost everything Tate says. I wonder if originally he was scared he was going to get canceled if he did agree with Tate. So he sided with, or he really only stuck to the stuff he didn't agree with at the beginning. And now he's realized, damn, Tate's fine. So I, I can speak my mind on stuff that I do agree with it, what he says. I imagine whatever teleprompter was there for the first interview, it was just nothing but stupid questions that had no substance. Yeah. Just trying to paint. Tate in a bad like light. All, all it said was interrupt, 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 <laughs> interrupt. No, he was he was reading the teleprompter. It was like one question, two questions, three questions. It was just, it was just going so like so fast. <laughs> yeah, you no. couldn't even comprehend what the, Tate was. If actually you haven't saying. seen the first interview, go watch it, and it's the most unprofessional thing you'll ever see. It's actually it's actually quite comical. It it kind of is, but it's just so unprofessional. But hey, I mean, we're only three minutes into this. Let's see, let's see. Maybe he's maybe he yeah. changes his mind. Well, some of it is, no yeah. question. Absolutely, but this is my point. My point is that the Taliban are going to do whatever the Taliban decide to do. If I'm going to fly over to another country, I will respect their laws and customs. It's not my job to come along and tell other people how to live. I don't believe I have a moral high ground in that degree. And mm -hmm. it Let's touch on that. I don't know if you know, did you hear about the guy who was the you like USA soccer coach or something? He was gay, mm -hmm. went to Qatar, frowns upon gays, and was like openly talking about it. In Qatar, he died. No one, I mean, no one's saying that Qatar did it. No one's saying that. You know, anybody, any of the Saudis did it, but he died. I know nothing about that, but that sounds realistic. I mean, people on the other side of the world in those parts, there's, it's a whole different, like I said, it's a whole different world over there. Yeah. You're I'm, not safe. I was just saying that because Tate said, Tate said, if I fly to another country, I'm going to respect their laws and customs. That's a big deal that I don't. He I, goes off all the time. Like when he goes to like, you know, the UK, he's got bodyguards because he just doesn't feel safe. Oh, and this is it's a different worlds. world championship kickboxer that doesn't feel safe. I mean, I go to Mobile, I go to New Orleans, I don't feel safe. There's just certain places in the world where you are not safe. <laughs> and you just need to be aware of your surroundings. It's the truth. It really is. All right, keep it going. People are genuinely upset and disgusted by it. The bottom line in most disagreements on the earth is violence. People who feel like they should go and fix it, then fix it with violence, then it can be the feminists who feel so outraged by it. But it's funny, they don't comment on these subjects, feminists. They seem to instead attack the Western male for some reason. It's an easy win for you to make women think you're not anti them, to say that when they're not given equality, as the women in Afghanistan clearly are not, because they're not allowed to go to university now, as of today, that is clearly unequal, unfair. We should all be able to agree that that is wrong. Well. Certainly, as a realist. Even you, tough guy, I, I, Andrew. It's Tate. not a tough guy. I am a professional. As a professional, I can state that yes, it is not equal. Yes, it is not fair. That is obvious for anybody. I'm not saying those things are not true. What I'm saying is, it's nothing to do with me. Right, okay, but you made a concession that you think is wrong. It's wrong. Then. I said it's unequal and it's unfair. Yeah, so wrong. Well, perhaps. And, Force and, yourself, Andrew. No, perhaps it's wrong under certain moral guidelines, but under the moral guidelines which are currently in charge of the jurisdiction of Afghanistan, they don't believe it's wrong. It's nothing to do with me. Well, then I, it, I'm not going to sit here and tell other countries how to run their laws. I'm going to live in societies which with right, laws I'll I tell respect. You, you know what? I'll take unfair and unequal. Sure. Where is the line for you between masculinity, which I will always defend, and which I agree with? I think a lot of women like men to be masculine. And um, what has become known as toxic masculinity. And the reason I ask you is that you are engaged let's in pause, that debate with this. men. All what do you think the definition of toxic masculinity is? Anything, is anything you don't like, you can just put the word toxic. In front <laughs> okay, <of>. okay, <laughs> that's the 2022 answer. What do you think? What is, what's your definition of toxic masculinity? I, d I genuinely don't know. I don't. I don't think masculinity is toxic i think you can be overwhelmingly masculine to some females and in their eyes that's called toxic masculinity like over over masculine would be like i don't think there's such thing as overly masculine but i'm just saying i'm just putting myself in the people who say toxic masculinity toxic masculinity is a word is a word in their vocabulary i think overly masculine 
men who like kind of emas- what's the word for emasculate in female form? Like what make women feel lesser of themselves could be referred to by toxic masculinity if that's a word in their vocabulary. I gotta disagree with that. You one. get what I'm saying? I mean, most girls don't feel inferior when they st- Stood next to Arnold Schwarzenegger in his pl- in his prime. Oh, I I 100% like agree, but I'm just saying the group I, that do say toxic masculinity is a word is a thing. That's what they think, in my personal opinion. I think the definition of toxic masculinity is the absence of masculinity. Let that one sink in. It means the toxic parts of what you're talking about are just the absence of masculinity. Like think of like the Titanic. Nobody was screaming toxic masculinity when the guys weren't getting on the lifeboats for the, you know, the, the reserves first toxic masculinity is just the absence of true raw abundant masculinity. Like men are just designed to protect and provide. So you can never protect someone enough or provide for them enough. Like there's no limit to protection and provision. So if you're lacking in those areas, that's toxic in my definition. Like if you're not able to provide those, you are just toxic. Like let's say, you know, me, you, and all of our guy friends, we're pretty physically competent. I don't like hanging around guys that aren't physically competent like that just because if something ever goes down and we need to protect our female friends, I need every single person there to be hands on deck handling it. If I'm surrounded by a guy who's going to run off and cry, I think that's toxic in my eyes. Uh, I get what you're saying, and I can agree. Uh, that's a weird way to put it. I've never really thought it's about the, it's it that the way. lack of masculinity. And, I mean, to be honest, in my eyes, I would think that toxic masculinity is just some made-up facade yeah. word. Well, there's because... toxic femininity, which is the lack of femininity. So you, you think, so when you, th- when you think of that, the two, you think it's just the lack of. I, I mean, I might get banned for this, but I think toxic masculinity is a man with too many female characteristics, and toxic femininity is a female with too many male characteristics in my eyes. I get that, but I think when people are saying it in my eyes personally, I think it's just when you don't like something, you throw the word toxic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, somebody cuts you off in traffic. Oh, toxic masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, geez. But, I mean, I to be totally honest, I have never heard the word toxic masculinity until Tate, Tate came up. Who else have you heard it with? Because I mean, you're- I mean, it's a buzzword now, so it's just like, and it's actually starting to die off because people, you know, people. Every time you hear the word misogynistic or misogyny, misogyny, <laughs> anytime you ever hear that now, the first reaction is just like, oh, that's like the fifteenth time I've heard that word in like the past hour. It's kind of losing. It's like magic. It's losing. It's like umph. Like it's yeah. like how is everything misogynistic? Yeah. Misandry though, which is the opposite of that word, which is the hatred for men, is all over the place, but nobody calls it out. Yeah, I agree. Dude, I was just sitting here listening to these two. You, you got to respect. These are two great, you know, I guess, people engaging in conversation. Like, they're two of the best in the world. At, at what having, they do. Yeah, at what they do. I mean. They genuinely are. Piers is damn good. Got, Tate is damn the, good. He's got one of the biggest platforms. I think, he does, I think he has the biggest think it, talk it, show it's, platform. It's definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest, but he is, like, worldwide. These are two giants clashing heads. You got to respect it. The number one most Googled man versus the top. Jur- what know, do you call it? Journalist? Top journalist, I yeah. guess. Whatever he is. I mean, I'm not, I only know Pierce Morgan from a couple of like different videos. Like I've never just like, I never wanted to just sit there and watch Pierce Morgan. It was always Pierce Morgan with Jordan Peterson, him and Tate, him and a couple other people. It was just like, I never like wanted to digest his content or his yeah. way of thinking. Well, now though, my man, I will listen to you over and over again. You have my respect. All right, let's run it the time where is the line for you where men shouldn't cross there's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's oh. genuinely masculine genuinely oh. ma- <laughs> yeah. yeah okay you watched this video before okay okay did you watch this beforehand not anywhere near this one fair enough masculinity is not out here to hurt people it's absolutely the opposite it's out here to protect and when bad things happen they call traditionally masculine men if you need a firefighter you need a masculine man when you call the police because of the problem you had you want masculine men and as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble when you look for backup you look for masculine men and masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about (laughs) we have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them and that's why we stayed in the titanic and died those were masculine men this from this is what i grew up with this is the family i grew up around and you might have actually heard that on a clip and that definitely probably just influences what i just yeah because you said the titanic i almost said like it verbatim i only got like halfway into the pierce morgan interview i didn't get this far i haven't heard any of it i haven't heard this but i've heard that clip 
I think he's said that before. I'm sure he has. I mean, a lot of the stuff he does recycle. And he does. Over and and over again. I, I, okay. I'm, I'm to the point where I've heard so much of it that I'm using his stuff as my own, yeah. you know, examples now. But verbatim, exactly what I just said, the lack of masculinity is toxic. And I, I agree with that one. It's hard to have too much masculinity. I mean, as a guy, it's, it's you just keep building yourself up and up and up and up and up. So the greatest men on this earth are just men with the most power. What public figure do you think is the most masculine figure? Like, if you had to think, who comes to mind? The Rock. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I'd think The Rock. I mean, okay, let's put it this way. Maybe fucking. Who doesn't like The Rock? The Rock donates millions and millions of dollars to charity. He is one of the hardest working men on this planet. He loves his family. Um, the man is a physical, just genetic freak. And uh, I, I mean... The Rock is probably... It's got to be The Rock, like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold like, Schwarzenegger, once upon a time. Um, he's past his prime. Respect to the great. He's still, he's still a masculine fucker. He's oh, no, 100%. Conquering. I think yeah. he's trying to run for the governor of California. Like, he's still Again, conquering shit. Yeah, and I mean, now I think it's The Rock, just because, I mean, that's just the first one that comes into my mind. Um, and then, I mean, Elon Musk is definitely up there. I mean, when I think of masculinity, the man is a king. He rules the earth. I can't think of anybody who has more power as a single person than uh, Vladimir Putin or Elon Musk, yeah. as far as just raw power goes. I agree. I'll tell you, mother. Yeah, and, and the world I lived in, and I think a lot of the things I'm saying now about masculinity and how people should act in the world, how the world should function, were considered completely normal and accepted by everybody only 20 years ago. I think the world's just lost its mind. For me to stand up and say a man should protect a woman, now gets to be called a misogynist and canceled. If I said that 10 years ago, everyone would say, duh. And what's funny is, everyone who argues against me and says men shouldn't protect women, especially all the feminists, if they were with their boyfriend and a man broke into their house, guess who they'd expect to go downstairs? Who do you think? Think they go themselves? Are they going to Afghanistan? No, we send men to do these things. So well, we, the send women, we send women in the armed forces too. We, you have to generalize when you make points. There are many, many courageous exceptions, people. Exceptions do not disprove the rule. Exceptions do not disprove the rules. Men do the fighting. What right now mean? in Ukraine, men cannot leave. Women are allowed to leave because men have to fight in the front line and women are allowed to go to Dubai. That is how it is. It's hard to argue. What really do you is. say to young men who come to you for advice? You feel lost. You don't really know where they fit into society. I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good hearted and God fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. Dude, okay. whether you love him or hate him, people need argue, to hear everything he that. just said. Somebody argue with that. I don't know how you argue with that. Uh, th there's no argument with like, there's no way to even disagree yeah. with one thing he just said. Feminist, liberal, masculine, not masculine, whatever the hell you are. There's no, no one can agree with that. I mean, disagree. No one That's, can disagree. There's not a single person in the world that can disagree with that, and it'd be okay. As a man, you really aren't born with that much value un unless you provide something. Like, this is just, like, an uncomfortable truth that was almost fault for a while, but now it's just well known. It's like, as a man, you have to become. You have to build. You have to be someone. That's just how it is. I mean, when I was 18, I wasn't worth anything. I had to become, I had to build, I had to spend years in the gym, years in the market getting just wrecked. So I mean, don't get shit handed to you. And I he's mean, telling people that, and some people don't like it, but that's just the world we live in. They want handouts. People want shit easy. It's not easy. Some people that do get the handouts and they are blessed and they might be born with rich parents. I mean, most people go broke every third generation. And that's for a reason. Like you get anything that comes to you quick departs from you quick too. So, you know, your, your parents might give you, a, you know, a, a car, a college fund, uh, you know, possibly a house. But if you're not financially competent enough to keep a hold of it, you're going to lose it pretty quick. 100%. I know several people that grew up with wealthy parents in my town. They're just dead broke right now because parents eventually just cut them off. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, that's, that one's gonna just that clip right there. You're probably gonna see all over TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. 
it needs to be. I'd rather see that now. than everything else that I've been seeing. He must have been practicing that in the mirror. He rattled that off so quick, so fast, so. I mean, I just genuinely respect the way he's. Dude, you got to think he he has an IQ good. that's probably twenty points higher than ours. The man thinks. I like to think three moves ahead. This man's thinking twelve moves ahead, ten moves ahead minimum. Got to respect it. Sheila Hancock says we've become too over emotional as a society, crying too much about Facts. everything. Facts, Piers. Well, she got a point? She's completely right. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not mm. because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence, you get rapists. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not going to hurt people. He's going to sit and think about his actions very carefully, and he's going to be a good man who protects for and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're going to find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings, and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. Absolutely notly wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inversed on its head. Completely notly wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You need to suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there or cry your eyes out or blame other people. Tough or being a out. woman, too, in modern society. It's certainly tough being a woman, but I'm not a woman, so why would I speak on issues I do not understand? I'm a man. You can feel an empathy for women. I feel empathy, certainly, but I do not understand their issues. I shall. will do it then. Okay, good. Check. <laughs> uh, check. Check. Jesus, can you play chess that fast? That how it check. goes? Uh, it's speed chest. I need to buy some time. How Don't much, say that. How long have I got? One minute twelve. Believe in yourself. Oh, I never ever give up. Believe in yourself. Peters. I do believe in myself. Thank you. Self belief is important. I do believe in myself, but this has not gone well. You're quite good at chess. I'll give you that. Yeah. Well, in the chessboard of life, I've done pretty good. Mate and two peers. Yeah, you can have that. Doesn't matter. It's mate in two. Check. Mate. Good game. Ah! Good game, sir. Well played. Thank you. And you'd say, I'll give you something. Uh, you're good at chess. Thank you. See you me. have to be. You just beat me. <laughs> What has chess player. taught you about life quickly? Chess absolutely reflects life. And even I say this now in my business meetings with my team. The, a lot of the problem in the world today, especially with teams and businesses, etc., everyone wants to be the king. But if you want to have a team, if you want to have a side that wins, if you want to win a game of chess, everybody has to know their role and do their role effectively. There can be a king and a rook and a pawn and a bishop and a knight, and everyone does everything correctly. Dude, I like and when that. When that happens, you have a very formidable board and you're hard to beat. And uh, chess reflects life absolutely. It's something I do every single day. Let's pause that. First off, Shout out Zion. He gave me an L today. He did? Yeah, I was driving down the road, and I'm not justifying my mistakes or anything. I wasn't paying. I, I, I took him not serious enough, and he actually beat me for the first time today. Were you just my, playing on your phone or something? Yeah, that was my first L that I've taken locally in like probably 10 years. Damn. Shout out Zion. Shout out Zion. Dude, but did you just hear that last thing he rattled mm -hmm. off about how what chess teaches you about life? It's, it's absolutely true. That's why I love chess. To have a team? Mm hmm So for those of you who don't play chess because it's becoming a – just forgotten just yeah I, I know nothing about chess like almost none of my friends know how to play chess um, i had to like show jesse and everything i 10 out of 10 recommend you learning how to do it because it's it's a game that no matter what happens it's your fault there's no luck it's all skill and you have to think three moves ahead minimum if you're playing against anybody that's good i've been playing i learned how to play chess before checkers and it's been one of the most valuable skills so it's like a true, it's a true gentleman's game. Like poker, there's luck involved. Like there's luck. I mean, it's chess poker has luck is a involved? mind game. Like just manipulation, manipulating other people, like making other people think. Like yeah, you, poker teaches you how to be a professional liar. That's pretty much all it does. And if you're good, like you, you can calculate the odds of what cards are coming next. I'm not a big poker guy. Chess though, it's me versus you. Then there's no luck. Everything that happens is my fault or your fault. No matter what, it is IQ versus IQ, pretty much. Mm. And I mean, it, it's just it teaches you tact, like teaches you to be more tactical. Because I have to think three moves ahead, and if the other person thinks three moves ahead, wow, now I got to think five moves ahead, four moves ahead minimum. So you think these chess grandmasters are like the highest IQ people on earth? Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, hundred percent. Like Magnus Carlson, like that dude just. Oh, he's a genius. Yeah. Oh, that man is a. I I saw a, a grandmaster at one of our crypto events. And he had, it was like eight chess boards in a circle. And he was playing like eight people at one time. He was just walking around, not even sweating. He would just go around each really? board. Everybody's just, damn. Yeah. And he was uh, one of the greatest. I can't remember his name. He was Kas- Kasparov, Gary Kasparov. He was like the number two guy. Bobby Fischer was like number one. And then Gary Kasparov was like number two. And I got to see him in person for the first time. And the man just looked unamused playing eight people. Like it just wasn't even like, he looked like he was just wasting his time. And I was sitting there just like, damn, okay. And it was like an hour line to play him. Oh, dude probably got a bag to go to that event. Maybe. Uh, I don't know how profitable being a chess player is, but I mean, Andrew Tate's dad was a championship uh, chess player and free game uh, for info. Most grandmaster chess players, when they're at like a world championship, burn more calories than an Olympic swimmer at practice. That's wild. Because your brain is just fight or flight. You know how you're when you're day trading, your yeah, brain just, is just going you get done you're hundred just miles an hour. And I mean, I've had twelve plus hour day trading sessions where I just feel like a zombie. Like I can't even think. Like it hurts to yeah. think. That never really registered for me. And then I walk away from the computer like, why am I tired? I just sat down all day. But like now that you said that, I was like, holy shit, that's Dude, kind of mind like, boggling like to think about. When you're an entrepreneur and you're working just eighteen hour days. And it's not just your hands working. It's yeah, your, your brain, brain going 100 miles an hour. I could never gain weight when I was 18 because I was working so hard. And it was just like, it 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 felt like I couldn't get enough calories in. And I was just losing weight. I'd be eating six meals a day, five meals a day. And I was losing weight. I was like, how is this happening? And looking back at it now, when your brain's going 100 miles an hour and you're in fight or flight mode, your body's just absorbing calories. It's just eating. It's just burning everything. That's wild. That's a, that's a dope fact. But... uh all right, you want to go ahead and close the video out? Anything you want to say about the Andrew Tate, Piers Morgan reaction? I love I love that the narrative's changing. I do too. I and think people it's, are waking up. I think it's real. I think it's reality setting in. Yeah. And the best advice I can give people from watching that is learn how to play chess. It will mentally make you a better person. The best advice I can give people from that is do what Piers did. I mean, he realized, you know, damn, I agree with this shit, and he stood up for it and did it, and now he's probably going to be more glamorized in a more positive light. He has now. my respect now. Yeah, I mean, he, respect Piers. He changed the way that he was thinking. He realized that he was wrong. He took the blame or he took responsibility for it, and he changed his ways after that. That's some masculine shit. That's what it takes to be a man. You got to own up to your shit. And I have, I see him in a completely different light now. Yeah. I'm a Piers Morgan fan now. Oh, shout out Pierce, shout out Tate. If you guys don't know who we are and you're coming on this video because you wanted to see Tate, might as well subscribe to us, Millionaire in the Megan Podcast on all socials. Follow me at GageB10. Follow him at Justin, Justin Keanu. Justin Keanu. Follow us everywhere. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Good.